What up, world? You're on the mic with Mike, Mr. Mike. And this is Keep That Chair Spinning. Let's get it. All right, good people. Welcome back. As I said, this is Keep That Chair Spinning. I am your man, Mr. Mike. And what we have here is simply a podcast that is geared to some of the barbers that may be fresh coming into the industry, uh, fresh out of barber school, trying to find their way, trying to find their footing, may feel as if they didn't get the direction path that they were looking for from the school that they graduated or came out of, um, or some barbers that have maybe been in the industry for a little bit and just still feel maybe in that same sense that you didn't get that uh, guidance that you were looking for or that you were promised and now you find yourself two three years in and you still just can't catch that clientele that you were hoping to snag up upon coming out um, so hopefully within this that we can help you guys and girls um, get your grip and find the the do's and don'ts that can truly get you going um, as I have stated in the beginning, you know, I'm a barber for myself. I've been in the industry for 10 years, so I definitely went through the ups and downs. There was a lot of ropes and journeys that I had to figure out on my own. So I'm trying to take this podcast and hopefully uh, cut out some of those don'ts uh, that you you would not have to go through. Uh, friends and family, if you have not done so already, please go and like and subscribe. We are on YouTube as well as on Apple and Spotify do me a favor and go do that for your boy please uh, we want to get into it today we want to talk about getting your license okay um, I'm probably behind the ball on this one probably should have jumped out the gates with this one but again this is for those that maybe uh, jumped out of school uh, they got their hours that was needed um, but didn't choose to pursue or go forward uh, for their testing now, I know a couple crooked schools, man, that'll just take your money and help you pass some hours and they don't give you the, the necessary learning skills that you need. Um, and that's big, man, because you need to know how to not only take your practical, but you need to know the writing part of it. Um, for me, the writing part was very tricky as well. Um, I still pass, of course, but you know it does get a little tricky to where they'll reword a couple of the things. And if you just don't have some of that uh, proper teaching to gear you up and get you ready for the testing then you just won't be all the way all the way around solid and ready for it so um, you know at the end of the day you do have to take the proper steps um, to make sure that you are ready for it man um, get you a study buddy whatever the case may be but once you find out you need to keep that rapport with your school and find out at what point that you're able to take your hours uh, or take your tests upon when you get your hours because i believe it was a little over halfway of the uh, uh, hours needed to graduate that you were able to take your writing and then the next uh, two three hundred hours or so um, you know you were able to do your practical so that's something that you keep in communication with your school i cannot uh, say it enough make sure you stay up to date on your school hours with the school make sure you're writing them down you make sure that you jot down every day that you're there every hour that you're there and every hour that you're not um, it can get a little stiff it can get a little iffy if you're dealing with a under the table type school uh, they'll try to teach you out your hours man again i've been there done that uh and it gets tough when you're ready to go out there and you're ready to go conquer this industry um what a blessing for you guys that are just now coming in or just now starting out. You know, for me, when I started out in barber school uh, 10 years ago, we needed 1,500 hours to graduate. Nowadays, at least here in Texas, uh, you only need 1,000 hours. So, man, them 500 hours, they do help. But, you know, hey, if you can get you some proper training, you know, along the way, um, it, you'll still come out fine. You know, you, again, you got to invest in yourself. You got to put forth the effort for yourself. So, you can't just always be looking for someone to hold your hand the whole time. Um, you know, for me, those extra 500 hours where we were, um, the barber school that we were at, man, you know, we got a lot of work in. Um, I've seen a lot of schools right now due to the placement that they're at. Uh, they don't get a lot of actual walk-in clients. And so they, they get hindered by that fact. Um, for us, man, where we were at, you know, great location i'll definitely give it up to my my school owner for that um 
man, you know, they, we talked about it just the other day, matter of fact, you know, it was Saturdays when we would walk in uh, and, you know, we open up at 8 a.m. on Saturday mornings uh, at the barber school. There would be a line of people waiting to get in and get their haircut uh, for the $5 haircut, almost as if a club, you know, it would be lined up, wrapped around the corner and you know, they would look at us crazy as we were trying to go for the door to get in just because they thought we were trying to skip the line. Like the that school owner where we were at, man, he had he had the right idea. He had it placed where it needed to be placed. So that's definitely a bad thing as far as if you're if your school is not in a good location, you're not gonna be able to get the work that you need to grind out. So it does take a little bit more from you to uh do some house calls and such. Um you know, you got to, at the end of the day, always promote yourself and let people know that you are available. But the switch is whenever you've hustled and bustled and grinded hard enough, you've got your license and you made a name for yourself, you need to be able to draw that line in the sand. You need to be able to promote yourself as a barbershop barber, not a on the go barber. Uh, yeah, I'll do some house calls after I've worked 10, 11, 12 hours. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll work an extra day, even though I'm already busting my butt five days at the shop. Like people will treat you how you allow them to treat you. So if you just always, if they make you feel like you're too busy, like you, they can't get you, uh, or you can't get them after shop hours or before shop hours, you need to let them know that's their fault, not yours. Because basically whenever you come into a shop and you make an agreement with shop hours, that's what you agreed to. You know, you shouldn't have to bust your butt uh, to after 10, 11 hours of standing behind a chair, especially on the busy days, the holidays. Now they're, you know, <clears throat> family does it too. I've seen it before. I've had it before. Where family still expects you to bring your clippers home, even on the days that you're not working, uh, to cut their hair because they feel like you owe them something. Got to draw that line in the sand. Man, when you work your 10 hours, you need to be able to walk out of that shop comfortably and feel like you did all that you could. You squeezed everyone in when they, when you could, um, working with your schedule as, much, as well as theirs. But um, that's what your license does. Your license says that I will work the shop hours that I agreed to work at um, because I was given this opportunity. I was blessed with this opportunity and I'm not going to mess this up. Like I wanna be able to have a balance. I want to be able to have a work life as well as a outside of work life. Um, whether that's family, whether you got you know a spouse and some kids, or if it's just you know your girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever the case may be, but you still want to be able to clock out and be done for the day. <clears throat> I feel like the license does that. I feel like when you're just an at-home barber, now you have both worlds collided and. It's hard to keep a balance, you know. It can bring um, a little more tension at the house because you're trying to cut when you got kids running around, your kids, uh, the the customers' kids, and now you got to worry about items coming up missing because you can't truly keep an eye on everybody that's in your house unless you do make those set rules that you know if it's only you, if it's you getting your hair cut, then it's only you coming. But I, I still feel like that's too much that you have to worry about. Uh, I feel like at the at-home barber, you also don't get your proper setup that you may need. Yeah, you can buy your barber chair, like that's cool, you can get it set up, but <clears throat> you're still not gonna get your proper lighting. You're still not gonna um, get the actual setup that you want. And y you'll never understand how much a walk-in barber shop does to you. Again, you cannot live off of uh, walk-ins alone, but there's always gonna be a slow day. And sometimes that walk-in that just so happened to come in on a Tuesday morning may end up being your forever customer. Well, you can't get that at the house as an at-home barber if you laid up because ain't nobody uh, called you until 12 o'clock. So yes, there's definitely pros to being at home and uh, you know not having to worry about paying too much overhead, but you'll definitely miss out on a lot uh, by working at home because for me it's that peace of mind again when I walk out the shop I'm no I'm no longer a barber I'm a husband and I'm a father so I'm be, I'm able to turn that switch off once I get home once I uh, walk up out of that shop so for me like I feel like that license gets you that ability to go ahead and separate the two 
have that work balance, have that peace, be able to lay your head at night and not have to worry about uh, little Johnny wanting to come get his hair cut at eight o'clock, even though you was already cutting from eight to seven. And now here it is, and you know, they, they want you to cut them again because they're getting ready to go out. Like, it, it's hard to um, draw that line when you're at home barber. Um, the other half is, you know, your, your gimmick shops. Uh, some of your gimmick shops, whether it be the sports clips or the uh, uh, super cuts, all that good stuff, a lot of those, they'll take you without your license as well because it's a franchise. And with that franchise, now you're getting paid your salary, which ends up not being uh, much at all because regardless if you cut 10 heads or three heads, this is what you're getting and it's peanuts to a dollar. So um, when you when you work at those franchises as well, you're not also getting the proper, um, you know, as we say, iron choppers iron. When you work at those little gimmick spots, you're not getting the proper surrounding that you need to grow because they don't care about how the cut looks. They care about how many heads they can get in and pump out um, to work out that salary dividend. Um, that is the other half of when you're choosing your shop, you want to make sure that you are getting in there with some veterans and you're getting in there with some um, <laughs> licensed barbers who know how to properly sanitize, properly clean up behind themselves, uh, who know how to properly deal with the customers. And again, that goes back to when you are looking at the shop to work at, make sure you go people man like go sit down for a little bit you know go talk with the owner ask is there any chance i can come by for a little bit and just kind of see how things are operating um like you do have that option you don't have to jump in uh right away blind and and uh you know end up regretting what you've done because again that's what ends up happening a lot of times that the barbers bounce around because they jump into something that they weren't really um looking for whether it be the shop hours you know hey i know it said nine to six but i thought that i was still going to be able to come in at 10 11 uh and leave at three you know you do have some shop owners that whatever the shop hours are that's the time i want you there that's the time i want you to leave no there is no working late uh there is no coming in early i need you from here to there so you know you got to make sure that you ask all those questions when you are looking for a shop to work at and make sure that there is an agreement uh and once given that opportunity you want to make sure that you don't mess that up either because again the owner they have to look out for themselves and they won't lose the business behind just you that one lonely barber um the world keeps spinning you know what i mean like we we as, as the owner the owner can't uh miss out over just one barber or uh, hope that they don't hurt your feelings and lose you because the chairs still have to be filled, the bills still have to be paid, and we're not going to lose or uh, damage their name because of your inability to follow the rules or, uh, you know, follow the guidelines. So um, make sure that you get that understood, that you are aware of the shop hours. And again, that's what your license does. It gives you the ability to set your shop hours uh, stand by your shop hours, stand by your off days, and have a peace of mind when you walk out. Um, so that's what the gimmicks, like like I say, the sports clips, the super clips, you know, you, you end up, you're just going in there and you're cutting and you're not, you're, you're grinding per se, but you're not grinding to blossom, you're not grinding to grow. Um, go find your barbershop that uh, people are very detail oriented, and again, as we said a couple uh, episodes ago, go back and look at reviews. Look at reviews for the shop. The reviews will say it. If they say uh, worst haircut ever or uh, very detailed, these guys take their time. These people know what they're doing in this shop. Like, go read the reviews. The reviews are authentic. Um, so you, you'll have a little better understanding of where, if this shop is for you. Uh, your your license is golden man like you can do so much with it um and i guess that's kind of one thing to kind of keep in mind too it, you can ask that question when you go to the owner uh, you know is everybody here licensed you know however you may word it because that's something to kind of look at too if the if the owner is willing to cut corners in that aspect they may be cutting corners and some other aspects too. And again, when you're trying to start out, when you're trying to get a constant groove going, 
that's the last thing that you want to do is you walk in on a Thursday night or a Thursday morning, should I say, or a Friday morning at that, thinking that you're about to cut 10, 15 heads, everybody that you done booked up, especially around holiday time, uh, and the door is locked. Or you look and see that there's a sign that says, uh, close until further notice because the owner hadn't paid his bills or uh, they're, you know, not taking care of business at home or whatever the case may be. And now you're out of a work, you're out of work, you're out of a shop um, for 30, 45 days, but all your materials are also inside. So you can't get inside to get your money makers and you can't even, you know, go get somewhere else to uh, cut the customers that you had lined up because your owner wasn't taking care of business. So that's kind of a couple of things that you got to keep in mind. If you're, if your owner, the owner that you're speaking with, the owner that you're hoping to work with has one or two other uh, barbers in there without a license, that may be the red flag that you need to pay attention to. Because again, if they're cutting corner in one situation, nine times out of 10, they're cutting corners elsewhere. So you got to be mindful in that. Um, what your license, your golden license does for you as well is if you do feel like you are the type that is uh, more of an independent type, more of an introvert type, you don't feel like you work well with others, uh, you feel like you could do all your own marketing, uh, whatever the case may be, by yourself, the suites, the suites come into play. However, you cannot get into a suite without your license. So yes, less overhead, you're taking care of your own little spot, you're in a room by yourself, but when you deal with them suite owners, they're not gonna let you in unless you have a valid license. So if you feel like whatever was happening at this shop or you didn't uh, agree with uh, shop hours or you didn't just agree how shop was ran in general, yeah, you can go get you a shop, uh, a suite, but if you don't have that license, you're stuck out once again. So. You want to make sure that you're, you you do what you need to do. Go pass your test. Go take your test. Um, find research. You know, uh, I know some people that sell the practical bags as well that can help you get set up. But until you get your license, you can't even get started. Really, you know, um, you you can't get into that suite. You can't grind it out as much as you want. Um, kind of going back to the suite real quick too. The suite. The other con of the suite is, as I said, the walk-ins. No matter how busy you think you may be, again, there's always gonna be a slow day. And when you work in that suite, no one walks by that suite just thinking, hey, I want a haircut, I'm just gonna pop my head in over here. Like, unless they've already, you've already uh, pumped yourself up and said, this is where I'm at. Even then, nine times out of 10, if you don't have anybody from eight to 12, you're not just gonna sit around in that suite all by yourself. I don't care how introvert you are, no one just sits in that suite all by themselves because you feel like what? Okay, now I have four hours to burn because nobody's contacting me. I'm gonna go run around. Okay, well, again, if that person that was just walking in because you've promoted yourself enough, they come to walk in, you're gone. What if you're on the other side of town? That is, is still kind of what the barbershop does because at least if you walk into a barbershop and you are on the other side of town, that shop owner can send you a text, send you a call and be like, hey, your customer was looking for, you know, what can I tell them? You know, uh, they, they wanted you specifically. If you're in that suite, you can't do that, especially if they don't have your number, uh, they lost the car, whatever the case may be. If they were truly in the area and they saw that there was a barber in here, but they don't have a number for you, they have no way to get in touch with you. Um, so as always, just like I say, at the at-home barber, the sweet barber, there's pros and cons to them both but you do have to weigh them out and try to figure out what works for you. Uh, for me, the barbershop is all I know. Um, I did look into a suite at one point in time, but truly just thinking about the room that you have in there, like I don't feel like I, I had enough um, that was gonna take care uh, of all the, the things that I do, um, all the services that I uh, you know give out. So for me, I, I'm just a barbershop guy until, you know, otherwise, plus, like I say, I've built it up, built it up enough to where, you know, walk-ins are plentiful. Um, you pack your patience and you be ready because you never know when it's going to come. Um, you know, again, we've talked about the back to schools and the holidays, you know, once you get so swarmed with those times, 
uh, you know, times do slow down. So that's why you don't live on walk-ins. You work on trying to build up your clientele, but your license is golden. Take those proper steps. Now, again, what you got to also remember too is if you don't have your license and that inspector comes through to that barbershop and whether you lied or you let it expire, not only do you get a fine if that inspector pops up, because they're never scheduled visits. You need to know that much too. They're never scheduled visits. That inspector is going to pop up whenever they get on the radar or whenever somebody kind of starts saying, hey, things aren't clean around here, whatever the case may be. Like, I feel like things need to be, you know, checked out around here. When that inspector pops up, not only do you get docked or fined, but the shop owner is also going to get docked and fined because of your inability to take care of your business. Um, so you want to make sure that you stay up to date on your license and you want to make sure that if you and the owner did have an agreement that, yes, all I need to go do is take my practical. I'm doing that in two weeks. Uh, do you mind if I work here until then? You need to make sure that you go take that practical. And if you fail, that you set back up that next date instantly to go take it again. The last thing again you want to do is be sitting around without a license in that barbershop and that inspector pops up when you get complacent, which is what we as humans do from time to time. We get complacent and that he comes in and he finds you and he finds the bar uh, the owner because the next thing the owner may very well do is let you walk. So now you're back in that vicious cycle. Do you want to cut it home? Do you want to have to worry about your spouse getting on you because you got 10 people in and out every day? Um, do you want to have to go lower yourself and go work at sports clips or super clips, super cuts? Or do you want to be left out in the cold because you can't get into a suite because they won't take you without the proper license? So make sure that you take care of your business. Study for your written. There's bags for the practical. Um, there's a couple other barbers that give you the ins and outs on everything that you need to do on your practical. Again, you can check that on YouTube. Um, the Ivan Zoop, like he's real thorough on everything that you need to do. Um, but you gotta, you have to take those proper steps and then you need to make sure that you keep your license up to date. They have it set up to where you can get the update for the renewal every two years. They'll email you and they'll send you a text, simple. Once you get that text, take care of your business. Don't drag your feet. Don't they say, oh, I'll get to it next week. Do it as soon as it comes through. Now you're up to date, and that's one less thing to worry about. Every two years, take care of your business. It's, it's good. It's easy. It's simple. Go get your license so that your license can work for you instead of you having to work for everybody else. As always, I appreciate it, man. Go get your license, people. Don't drag your feet. Your license is golden. Do me a favor, do me a solid. Go hit that like, go subscribe. YouTube, Apple, Spotify. I appreciate it as always. One.